what on earth is this doing down here in Texas? This is from Chicago and it was only sold there. How did it get here? Hmm. What you're looking at is a 1980 General Electric C400 Crime Fighter, which was designed specifically for Chicago to combat crime. Ooh, because uh, making an ugly and weird bucket cobra head combination hybrid thingy mabob is totally going to fight crime. Clearly it didn't work because uh, there were hundreds, well not hundreds of thousands, but maybe hundreds of thousands of these things installed throughout Chicago and uh, the crime was still horrible. Obviously they've gone to LED now so these are pretty much all gone except for in parks and uh, many collectors have been able to save these from linemen removing them knowing other people in the power companies or rather the lighting department and uh, so forth and also some of them were actually linemen themselves and took them down so this one was received obviously from that area of the country and is down here in uh, my garage for now it's not my light sadly it's uh, one of my best friends lights he uh, brought it down here from his place which she bought it literally just I think like two weeks ago or something like that and uh, yeah obviously it's a GEM 400 a full cutoff the difference is it's actually a split door not an A um, for some reason they decided until the I guess the later years that these were just gonna be the split door variation which means the ballast is mounted on top instead of at the bottom on the door. So, interesting facts about this, or observations, whatever. I didn't realize this is plastic. And I also didn't realize on the this old, they had a Chicago C on them. I thought that that was more for one of the newer stuff, but I guess it makes sense. And they started out in 1967 with the GE M250R, and they were only mercury vapor, of course, at the time. Those were sold across the country, have been found in Detroit, even down here in some places, all the way up in Washington, Oregon, all sorts of places, and even Canada. So those are found everywhere, but these literally were exclusive to Chicago. They were not sold anywhere else. They were not designed to be sold anywhere else. And uh, it is very ugly, but cool, is all I have to say about it. So. What's also fascinating is the other split doors, at least during this era, um, or some of them anyway, maybe not all, happen to have the little embossment here for where the C is supposed to go, but it's just this oval without the C. And then the tag would go here. If you ordered it, at the time when this was made, tags were not a standard procedure. They were still something you had to order separately or specify you wanted it. So you just put the two corners here and it would line it right up and it would be square. So, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and open it up here. Oh wow, what's that? A mercury vapor lamp? Why, how's that possible? The uh, original high pressure sodium ballast was uh, cooked to no end. And so, my buddy installed a 90's GE mercury vapor ballast in here and so I'm going to test this and to demonstrate it rather with a 1970 Westinghouse lifeguard that is uh, as bright as a brand new lamp I've actually compared it with a new lamp that has never been used and they're the same brightness so uh, 54 years later still the initial lumens basically Westinghouse the best Speaking of uh, Westinghouse being the best, or other companies, as much as I do enjoy the products of General Electric, you can definitely tell that uh, they do not like to make things super well, at least during this time, because uh, everything on this is rather thin for casting compared to other fixtures. It's not the worst in the world. Um, that goes to the current or outgoing American Electric products, like the 115 and such. Those are like almost plastic feeling but they are metal so uh, yeah it's definitely not the most amazing thing made but it's really neat in that respect that it was made specifically for 
uh, one of the worst cities in the country. I mean, cool for buildings and such, but uh, crime and a lot of other things, it's So, oh well. As you can see, of course, it's vertically mounted and it does have an adjustable socket. So you could, uh, I guess, just change how much light is spread out. And it could also be that's for different wattages, so if you have the lower wattage ones, which have shorter lamps, then maybe, I don't know, maybe that's the idea. So, kind of neat. So you can see it's just a regular, almost high bay-like reflector with uh, this little directional shield here. Which I've seen pictures of these on the inside, and not all of them have this guy, so there must have been some kind of uh, townhouse, apartment, or whatever near this that warranted them putting that on. So, let me get a screwdriver here so I can get this uh, ballast door off. Try to not get in the shot myself because I hate that. So here's the inside of the ballast compartment. Got the uh, Bakelite terminal block, GE standard, been doing that for a long time. Uh, even back in the uh, 50s they did that. And then you got your 90s GE M59 slash H33 ballast because they have had dual lamp type ballasts probably since the 70s I want to say. Um, all GE ballasts and fixtures in mercury vapor or metal halide literally just came with both a red and a blue tag and you just picked which one you wanted to use and then you put the tag on there so that the lineman would know what lamp to grab. That's how they did it so these are always metal halide or mercury ballasts which is kind of cool because usually most fixtures the mercury ballasts cannot run metal halide or if it does it's kind of spotty and so yeah. The photocell is disconnected, which is why those wires are hanging down. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm uh, going to go ahead and put this back together. And we'll get, we'll turn it on. Sorry that this is a little bit more uh, in-depth than the other videos. It's just such an interesting, unique fixture. that it warrants a little bit more overview than others. Also, another interesting thing is the uh, slip fitter bolts are actually on the top. Not used to that. Even for the other split doors I've dealt with, that is kind of strange. So yeah, it's just a simple screw for the ballast door. On the power door models, which would be the A, it has a screw like this and a latch, and so, yeah, there's that. So anyway, we'll go ahead and fire it up. You can barely tell it's on because of the daytime. But it is definitely in operation. And it is a pretty quiet ballast, which is somewhat uncharacteristic of GE stuff. Generally, the varnish kind of wears down, or they just vibrate a lot. But I guess this one is in good shape still. It is really weird seeing this in mercury vapor, considering that this era of power or of crime fighter was never made in mercury vapor at all. Because Chicago had started doing sodium by the early 70s. Although I'm pretty sure the bulk of the sodium came in in the 80s because I have a lot of photos saved on my phone of older Chicago and like the late 70s, early 80s, where there were still a lot of clamshells left, and also uh, 
OV25s, which I actually am not sure if those were sodium or not, because they did have HPS silver liners um, all over Chicago as well, but kind of feel like the ones in those older photos were probably mercury vapor, more than likely. So. It does look pretty amusing on this shorter arm, as most of these larger fixtures do. <laughs> nice thing about this uh, lamp being well 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 used um, is it does warm up a lot quicker than my brand new clear mercury lamps I have so luckily I won't have to have an extra five minutes added onto this video because it's already kind of a long video as it is so uh, yeah it's nearing full brightness now and it looks pretty nice I do when I eventually get these, and hopefully I'll have two, maybe more, and I'd like to have one that's converted to mercury and then one that stays HPS because I'm so used to these being high pressure sodium that it would be kind of odd to have uh, just a mercury one. I like to have ch choices, you know, have both instead of just only one. That's just how I am, so yeah. But anyway, uh, without further ado, I think that's all for this video today. I hope you all enjoyed this uh, demonstration of this 1980 General Electric C400 um, crime fighter fixture in 400 watt mercury vapor. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.